The activity, Keys to the Rainbow, has many applications when talking about light and how astronomers learn about our universe. In this activity, we'll see how light is studied in detail to tell us about the atmospheres of distant planets around other stars. If we can detect evidence of water in the atmosphere, there might be life there. There are more concepts covered in the activity write-up. Now you might recognize these colorful images as spectra and spectral lines, but what seems like common knowledge to you may not be as familiar to the general public or to younger audiences. Notice in this activity that we don't use words like spectrum or absorption lines, and we don't even begin to get into what's causing these lines. Let's see how it's done. Notice how Aaron engages his audience by asking them questions they want to answer. He also lets their questions lead his presentation. Visitors are much more likely to remember the information if they ask the question, like this. When you look up into the sky on a clear night, what do you see? Lots of stars. How do you think we learn about those stars? Um, telescopes? Right. But even with our biggest telescopes, all we see from a star is a point of light. The stars are so far away we can't measure how wide one is or even if they're round. So how do we learn about stars when all we ever see are points of light? The secret is what's hidden in the light. What may look like white light to our eyes is actually made up of many different colors. You can spread the colors out with a prism. Has anyone seen what happens to light when it goes into a prism? Yeah, rainbows. Right. Prisms spread out light into a rainbow. Scientists spread out light in the same way to learn more about stars. Let me show you how. When we spread out the light from a star like our sun, it looks like this. Hey, what are those dark lines? Great observational skills. Now those lines happen because light coming from the star must first pass through the star's atmosphere. That's right, stars have atmospheres too. The components in a star's atmosphere block very narrow colors in the rainbow. This tells us what's in the atmosphere of the star. And each component has its own unique set of lines. So these lines here are a combination of many components together. Now here are some components. And why don't you pass those out? Now, you take hydrogen, and what do you have? Helium. OK. Would you like to see if your ingredient is in this star's atmosphere? See if the lines match up. Mm-hmm. Great, that's right. So hydrogen and helium are both components in this star's atmosphere, but not water. And we can tell a lot about a star's atmosphere by spreading out the light. But that's not all. Sometimes planets orbiting a star will pass in front of the star, blocking a bit of the light and giving us valuable information. The light from the star also passes through the atmosphere of the planet. And while the planet passes in front of the star, we get information about its atmosphere and we can, this can tell us a lot. So, let's see what's in this planet's atmosphere. We'll leave in the hydrogen and the helium because we saw those lines in the star. Would anybody like to see if their ingredient is in the planet's atmosphere? Uh-huh, so this planet has carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. Do you think this planet might potentially have life on it? Now, how will we know? Is there water in the atmosphere? No. Hmm. Then it's probably not a good place to look for life. We're looking for planets with water in the atmosphere. So let's try again. So, now what if we saw this planet? So, what do you see in the planet's atmosphere? Water. 
Yeah, this planet has water in its atmosphere. Do you think this would be a good place to look for life? Yeah. We're hoping to find a planet with water in its atmosphere. Oxygen, methane, ozone would also be good indicators that we should examine a planet for life. All those ingredients disappear out of the atmosphere fairly quickly unless something is constantly producing them. So these would be excellent planets to look for possible alien life. And now you know how we're looking at distant planets for the evidence of water and other indicators of life. So well done. Now what questions do you have?